Welcome back, Cherry Blossom family. This is Derek with What the Hemp Wednesday, bringing you all things hemp from around the nation and around the world. And today, we're going to do a little bit of both. We're going to talk about some world stuff. We're going to talk about some national stuff. But let's start with Mexico. Mexico, uh, their Supreme Court uh, last week made a decision to basically at an 8-3 ruling to uh, authorize the adult use of marijuana in Mexico, which is kind of interesting. You know, like we have all in the United States are pretty much been looking at Mexico as a supplier of illegal marijuana, and now like they're kind of coming over. Uh, however, their Supreme Court sort of, and this, well, let's back up. This is, you know, obviously done to some degree to help, you know, bring down the level of violence at the U.S.-Mexico border, um, you know, with drug trafficking and such. But they didn't really address hemp, you know, and the Congress is in action to do that. Uh, it's kind of bringing up sort of a similar situation that we have here in the United States, where Mexico's 32 states are all now talking about writing their own hemp laws. And it would be sort of like a mishmash of things, you know, just like we have here. So, you know, congressional interaction is not just something that is solely American. See what I'm saying? But either way, uh, one piece of legis the piece of legislation that uh, was presented to Congress would allow hemp cultivation in Mexico for the first time. It does not allow uh, hemp cultivation right now. Uh, create a new regulatory agency to oversee both hemp and marijuana and establish hemp as a non-psychoactive form of cannabis, putting a 1% THC limit on the plant. Uh, unfortunately, right now, Mexico is just in kind of like a planning and uh, organizing stage, um, and, you know, filling out paperwork and such. So no businesses are really actively in the hemp or cannabis business, uh, unless, you know, or not legally anyway. In other news, Apple will now allow cannabis related apps uh, in their Apple store. Um, this is a policy updated June 7th, so just about a month ago. The, the policy change uh, includes restrictions that require cannabis delivery apps uh, be geo-restricted within legal cannabis boundaries and applications must come from legal entities and not just an individual. You know, so that is kind of progressive for Apple, uh, a little more acceptance of the culture. They understand the thing is growing and it's not just about, you know, getting high, if you will. Um, along those lines, <laughs> states continue weighing options as Hemp derived Delta 8 THC disrupts marijuana markets. Now, as you know, last year was a big year for Delta 8, kind of the breakout year. It has kind of caused some ripples in both hemp and the THC markets. Uh, and lawmakers all around the country are trying to figure out like how they're going to move forward. So, um, state level state level bans on isomers like the delta 8 and the delta 9 some states are saying like hey we're fine with this some states are saying no uh and some states are kind of feeling like well let's just kind of step back and look and see how we can approach it so uh let's give you some examples because marijuana growers are fearing and hemp growers are fearing that delta 8 and delta 9 uh, derived from hemp is undercutting their profits. Hemp growers, not as much, but definitely, I mean, like the people who sell the hemp products, they are getting some competition, but definitely on the grower end, which we all need to get to this finished product, uh, they're, they're kind of freaking out on the THC side. So Oregon is looking to ban the sale of hemp products containing THC to minors. We talked a little bit about that last week. Uh, give marijuana regulators new authority to set THC concentrate limits, uh, especially uh, for hemp products sold in general commerce. Uh, Michigan, their uh, lawmakers agreed uh, to regulate all isomers under its state, meta, state marijuana board, uh, which would include all THC products in the legal definition of marijuana, therefore subjecting all merchandise to all the same level of testing, regulation, and restrictions. Um, <clears throat> so that, that is waiting signature from Michigan's governor, uh, California, the lower chamber has passed a hemp bill that would limit hemp derived THC isomers like Delta eight and Delta 10 to marijuana dispensaries. So I think it's pretty smart to kind of treating all the THCs in the same way. If you want them, you go to the dispensary. That's, that's actually uh, pretty, pretty smart. Uh, in Washington state, they're discussing how to enforce a law that already says hemp derived THC is allowed. 
in the legal marijuana market, although uh, marijuana businesses, owners, business owners say the, pra excuse me, practice is kind of rampant. So, excuse me, there's no hemp derived THC allowed, but they're kind of running, you know, kind of full force with that out there in Washington state. Some states, uh, we're not going to see too much action on this because a lot of the states are kind of out for, uh, out of session right now. So probably in the fall and by the, by the beginning of 2022, we're going to see some more of that. But uh, I would not expect to see too much change in states that don't have any uh, hemp or THC laws whatsoever. Now, some things we're going to talk about, and this affects us individually, like as a company, um, marijuana companies and, and hemp companies face extreme challenges marketing, uh, especially on social media. Um, some of the obstacles um, that we face is that, you know, there will be bans from the social media companies, particularly Facebook and Instagram, um, you know, so it kind of sends you in other directions. And now they're talking about, uh, there was a talk last week by the United Nations panel called for a global ban on cannabis business advertising. Now you would think that cannabis or, or hemp is not a business that needs to be advertised. Ever, like people who know, know, and people who don't, don't. But just like any other business, you have to advertise, you have to expand your reach. You want to reach new customers, you know, and I know that sounds like in a weird back alley sort of drug dealer kind of way, but it's not, you know, like people need to understand that there are more options out there for them than just what you said. I mean, shoot, the, the drug manufacturers can market on TV all day and, and, and tell you at the end of commercial, you know, a 30 second list of things that may go wrong if you take these things. So I think, it, you know, in a fairness level, it should give THC and CBD the opportunity to kind of do that, you know, at least get out there. Uh, now, the interesting part about all this is a lot of the, the especially like the TV affiliates and things like that, um, some of the NB, NBC affiliates, and there was one in Denver that actually ran, they worked with one company and sort of ran like a test to see how it would go over for a couple ads. But I don't think that company's going to do that again. And not and may, maybe not the company and maybe the, the NBC affiliate, but a lot of these affiliates are basically saying that they tend to err on the side of protecting children. So there's no thing saying that they cannot market or, or, or present these ads to the general public. They just don't want to, um, which is strange because we do market alcohol. You know, there was a time we market cigarettes and I kind of understand why, but... I guess maybe because of the, the they're both smokable material, combustible material. Maybe they're all sort of lotted in the same thing. I, I, I don't know, but um, this, maybe this is sort of a plead from from companies like ourselves who believe that we could be a lot further along if we were able to advertise, you know, and and, and educate in our own way on social media, on um, media outlets. But there are there is things that there are uh, things that are available to us. <clears throat> there are internet banner ads on popular websites, ads on cannabis specific websites, including Leafly, Weed Maps, those kind of things. Um, local or satellite radio ads. Now I don't know, and and, and again, it's kind of subject to the station, like how. It, it's their policies, not the federal or any sort of state policies that are saying no. So you got to find one who's willing to work with you. Um, we thought we had some podcasts that were willing to work with us, but even then, like some of their, their their policies are like, no, we're not ready to touch that. Uh, print ads in magazines or alternative weekly newspapers. Online video channels such as YouTube or other platforms, as you see, is part of the reason we're doing some of these videos right now. Just Not just to reach out, but also to mainly to educate, but it does help us reach out. Uh, partnerships with online video streaming services, uh, direct-to-consumer email and text message marketing, uh, billboards, which they're talking about banning in some places, but right now that's still a viable option, uh, community events and sponsorships, direct mail through the post office, perhaps with coupons, and collaboration with other mainstream brands and endorsements and partnerships. So uh, those are some of the options. If you are in the business, um, I do want to take some time and address that today, but if you are in the business and you were looking for other options as we are, um, this has been informative to me, so I'm trying to share that as much with everybody out there. It is a tough road. We do believe that we're just here. This is a temporary space and we're going to move forward. But until we do, we have to find creative ways for us to get our voice out. So that is all for the day. Uh, that is What the Hip Wednesday for this Wednesday. And we will see you on Friday. Uh, as we talked about last Friday, if you, unless you, in case you missed it, we are... 
kind of suspending the interviews for a little bit while I let people go on vacation and enjoy themselves in the summertime. Uh, it was getting a little hard to tie people down. So we're going to talk about something that people have been asking us about, uh, and that is terpenes. So every week we're going to discuss terpenes. This week, uh, oh, a different one. Uh, there's probably about 15, so the 12 to 15, it takes us a couple months. So uh, this week we're going to discuss myrcene and the powerful effects that it has on your body and endocannabinoid system. Uh, until then, uh, I'm Derek. This is Cherry Blossom CBD. Please um, put your comments in the comment section if you have any. Forward this to your friends, family, colleagues, what have you. Uh, always like, subscribe, share. So thank you very much and have a great day.